Hello everyone and peace be upon you. Welcome to this day's episode of our show, the Elbir Global Foundation Talk Show. I'm your host, Zanna Babakura, with my co-uncle, Zainab Muhammad Hassan. Today we have a special package for you as we are having our guest from the University of Medugri Teaching Hospital. She is a medical doctor and with her we will be discussing a very serious and time-targeted topic of themed cervical cancer. Some of you are very much aware of it, while some must have heard about it several times, wondering what it might possibly be. Some can say a few facts about it without getting themselves fully convinced with its broad generalizations, while some must have been victims of cervical cancer. However, in getting to know whatever it could be, our honorable guest is here today to enlighten us and to share her knowledge of cervical cancer with us. Let's meet our guest. In discussing a topic like this, it is much important to listen as we all will benefit. Let's meet our guest. May we meet you, Doctor? Hi, um, I am Dr. Aisha Terry, Aisha Babi Terry, from the uh, Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology, mm -hmm. University of Medigree Teaching Hospital. Mm -hmm. I'm actually glad to be here. Um, it's uh, actually a timely invitation because mm -hmm. January is a cervical cancer month mm -hmm. and as you all know, screening is going on, awareness programs are going on everywhere. Sure. And I'm, In fact, I'm just coming from one of the screening units. Thank you so much. It's nice to have you. What yes. can you possibly tell us about your academic and professional career? Right, um, I attended University Staff Primary School here in Medjugorje. I schooled uh, in Medjugorje, actually. Okay. And then I attended Federal Government Girls College in Mongolo okay. for my secondary school living certificate. Mm -hmm. And then I attended University of Medjugorje mm -hmm. for my MBBS. I'm presently a resident doctor mm -hmm. in the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology, mm -hmm. University of Medjugorje Teaching Hospital. You are a resident doctor. It's yes. nice to have you. That's excellent. Okay. Um, you. Doctor, you are joining us in the studio to enlighten the public on cervical cancer. What is it all about? Right, um, cervical cancer basically is a type of cancer that develops from the cells of the cervix. Cervix is um, the opening of the womb. It is um, the opening that usually holds the baby in place during pregnancy and it is the part of the cervix that opens during delivery okay. for baby to be delivered. So cervical cancer, it's usually, the cervix usually is hidden within the vagina. So it's not visible to all, unless uh, a woman goes to the hospital and then we do a vaginal examination, that is when we feel oh for the cervix. Okay. And then when a woman puts her hand into the vagina, she could feel the cervix. It normally feels like the tip of the nose when she inserts her finger into the vagina. So cancer generally is the second leading cause of death globally, and then it is the fourth most common uh, cancer in women worldwide. Unfortunately, it is the first in developing countries like Nigeria. So it's uh, actually a cause for cancer. In Nigeria, in the year 2020, about 12,000 uh, 12, new cases were diagnosed with over 7,000 deaths. So you see, it's really an issue worth discussing. So um, one good news actually about cervical cancer is that it is a preventable disease because the service is uh, easily accessible and then diagnosis and treatment can be done, unlike ovarian cancer, other malignancies that are not easily accessible. So mm. that's uh, the good news about it. So it is actually pronounced as, as cervi cervical cancer, not yeah. cervical cancer? Yes, it's uh, cervical cancer because uh, we have cervical bones at the neck, okay. so the cervix, so we pronounce it cervical cancer. Okay. So that is why we are having a program now aiming to screen like about 3,000 women uh, collaborate in collaboration with uh, M1, uh, Sogon, Gosson, so many collaborations okay. just to eradicate, oh. yes, just to eradicate cervical cancer. Well, that's nice to hear. Um, what are the warning signs of cervical cancer? Um, cervical cancer, once an individual has a sign or symptom, then the disease is already at an advanced stage. That is why the awareness program, the screening program is ongoing, so that we don't want a situation whereby a patient will come only when she has symptoms, because when there are symptoms, then it's already an advanced disease. However, some patients do present with uh, postcoital bleeding. Postcoital bleeding is the bleeding that occurs following sexual contact. 
and then others present with other forms of bleeding like intermenstrual bleeding. Intermenstrual bleeding is bleeding that comes in between menstruation and then others present with postquartal bleeding. Postquartal bleeding is bleeding that comes following cessation of menstruation in elderly women. Then others present with foul smelling vaginal discharge and then others present with uh, at the extreme of cases, they present with fistula, vesicovaginal fistula, rectovaginal fistula, and so many debilitating. This is a serious issue. Yeah. Um, you made mention of the signs and symptoms of this cervical cancer. So, do these signs actually develop overnight, or do they just manifest gradually? They manifest over a very long period of time, actually. That is why mm -hmm. the pre-malignant lesions, once they are there, it gives the signal that in 10 or 15 years' time, the patient will develop cervical cancer. So the pre-malignant lesions can be picked during our screening programs, and then it can be treated with no difficulty and with no issue. And what are the immediate symptoms? Immediate symptoms, as I said earlier, they don't, re they don't really have any symptom initially. Once a patient starts having symptoms, then the patient has, uh, ha uh, has an advanced disease. Okay. Yeah, but initially there will be no symptoms. That is why we advocate, that's why the awareness program, the screening program is okay. ongoing because there are no symptoms. Basically, most patients are asymptomatic. They don't have any symptoms. Uh, you made mention of screening programs. So are there any guidelines you undergo when carrying out screening programs? Yeah, we have lots of uh, screening programs. We, uh, the, we have the pap smear. That okay. is what we usually do. And then there are other, other types of screening programs that we have. We have the liquid-based cytology, which is really not common in this part of Nigeria, though we still do in UMTH. But the pap smear, it's usually done from age 21 years to 29 years. With just pap smear without HPV testing, that is uh, high risk uh, uh, human papilloma virus okay. screening, yes. And then from 30 to 65 years, we do the pap smear and then the HPV testing. So this is the screening we do here. But for the uh, general screening, the 3,000 women uh, program we are having now, mm. in a, an attempt to eradicate uh, cervical cancer for this year's cervical cancer month, mm. we use the visual, visual method. We use acetic acid and then the lugus iodine just mm. to visualize the cervix. And then uh, when, when there is a pathology, we treat immediately with thermal ablation, cryotherapy, and all. Thank you. So, what are the challenges you face when undergoing healthcare systems like this? Are there any challenges? Yeah, you? there are lots of challenges actually. Um, challenges. Like uh, the team side? Yes. Challenges in patients presenting late because late presentation is actually the norm in developing countries. Nigeria isn't an exception, and Meduguri at like in Meduguri, most patients present mm. lately. Uh, when they present, there is nothing or very little we can do about it. So we have a challenge of late presentation and then the, the financial implication of mm. managing the disease mm. as well as the, the screening uh, methods we have. It's now readily available and then religious and traditional mm. barriers now uh, put a hinge between our patients coming and the obstacles. Yes, okay. Now let's consider the factors leading to cervical cancer. What brings cervical cancer, if I may ask? What okay. are the causes? So, uh, about 99.7% of cervical cancer is caused by human papilloma virus. The human papilloma virus are divided into the low risk and the high risk. Okay. So the high risk type are the ones implicated in cervical cancer. So the high, high risk type, precisely the 16 and the 18, are the ones implicated in cervical cancer. And then um, it's uh, gotten through sexual contact. So mm. any individual that has had sexual contact is at risk of developing cervical cancer. Okay. And then smoking too is implicated as a cause. It's a cause. Yes, of cervical cancer. Then other known risk factors for cervical cancer are multiple sexual partners. When, mm. the, uh, when an individual has more than one sexual partner, mm. then she's at risk of developing cervical cancer. And then early quetechi. Early quetechi is when a lady or a girl indulges into having sexual contact at a tender age. She's at risk of developing cervical cancer later in life. Other implicated causes are uh, immunosuppression and, yeah, immunosuppression. Okay, that's good. Thank you so much. Now, having known the causes and symptoms and women experiencing cervical cancer, how could it be prevented? We all believe prevention is better than yes. cure. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So, uh, cervical cancer, 
can be prevented using, you know, we have to strategize how to prevent it. So we have the primary prevention, mm -hmm. the secondary prevention, and the tertiary prevention. Okay. So in the primary prevention, what is basically uh, done is to educate the populace as we are doing and then to create an awareness. So uh, that is, as you've seen, we've gone mm -hmm. to so many radio stations, so many television stations, even before you people invited us. Sure. We've gone to so many places creating awareness. And then uh, we even, we've even gone to IDP camps just to create the awareness because uh, preventing the disease is better than treating it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the prior one of the uh, things to do in primary prevention is the education and the awareness. And then the HPV vaccine. HPV, that's a human papilloma virus vaccine. vaccine mm -hmm. Yeah. We have uh, patent vaccines. So once, uh, what as I said, patent vaccines actually mean. Yeah, the vaccines that can eliminate the human papilloma virus. Okay. So if we can get a vaccine, we have so many of them in the developed countries and then in most part of Nigeria, though we don't uh, have them available in Medugri, but uh, Cyberex, um, we have Cyberex, mm. then Gadasil, Gadasil 9, so many of them. So if these vaccines are used as a um, mode of uh, prevention of cervical cancer, since we know 99.9% .9 of cervical cancer is caused by the human papilloma virus, That's at HPV. least yeah, if we eradicate or clear the HPV, uh, HPV virus, mm -hmm. uh, human papilloma virus, then we are sure of eradicating cervical cancer. Then other things to do in the primary prevention is to uh, lifestyle modification. Lifestyle modification okay. such as cessation of smoking, since we know it's a cause of it's cervical course, cancer, and then um, living a decent life, since we know having multiple sexual partners is a risk factor for cervical cancer. So living mm -hmm. a decent life will now decrease the risk of cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. That's for primary prevention. Then for secondary prevention, that is when we do the screening. Screening using the pap smear, the liquid-based cytology, mm -hmm. and individual inspection using either acetic acid or the lugus iodine. These mm -hmm. are, yeah. Then the tertiary, the tertiary method is whereby uh, you treat early treatment of those diagnosed with the disease mm -hmm. and then rehabilitation of those with the disease because getting um, a person being diagnosed with cervical cancer is really debilitating. So you have to rehabilitate the patient. Um, um, all right. Thank you. That's quite insightful. Okay. As cervical cancer has less little or no signs at all, when a person manifests, when a person comes up with cervical cancer, how do you take care of that issue? What do you treat it? All right. For patients that present uh, early or patients that we pick the pre-malignant lesion, we do, uh, we offer them so many things. We have the loop, uh, large loop excision of the transformation zone. We have the uh, uh, thermal ablation and all that. But for diagnosed cervical cancer, early stages, we offer them chemotherapy. Chemotherapy is uh, when we offer them cytotoxic drugs before and or after the surgery. And then we may also offer them chemo radiation or radiotherapy. And then at the advanced stage of the disease, there is virtually nothing we can do about it, but we offer them radiotherapy just to ease their pains and then to have a comfortable life. Then unfortunately, we don't really have a radiotherapy machine here in Medugli. And I think we only have four in Nigeria. So what is actually this radiotherapy machine? The radio radiotherapy machine uh, actually emits radiation to the yeah to the cancer cells, and then it's unlike uh, because at an advanced stage you cannot really remove the cervix. You can't do anything. It has gone beyond that. It has mm -hmm. spread everywhere. So the radiation it emits the radiation into the into the tumor, and then it shrinks, and then just a palliative you know, okay. measure. In order to free the world from cervical cancer. What okay, it goes to their respective stakeholders? Um, we have, s uh, apart from, okay, let me start with the uh, government of Borneo State. I think the government should should work with us, yeah, in our drive to uh, eliminate cervical cancer. If uh, the government is part of us, I think it's going to play a, a role in eradicating that. Then aside that, since I said we don't have uh, screening uh, yes. units, yes, screening units, the government can help in creating screening units in Nigeria, in Medjugorje precisely, and then link these units to treatment units, so that once a patient is diagnosed, 
the patient can just get a treatment almost immediately. And then the HPV vaccine, since I said it's, uh, it can eradicate, it's like 99 points, uh, yeah, 7 percent cause of cervical cancer, then if HPV vaccine could be part of our routine immunization program, I think it's also going to be going to uh, go a long way in eradicating cervical cancer. And then not forgetting girl child education. If mm -hmm. you educate a child, a girl child, I think yes. she will be aware aware of herself, her environment, and then she will be aware of what is going on. And then the uh, education, the awareness program we are doing, it's, it, will, it will be very easy for us to do that and then she will, she will help us in detecting so many things on herself, on her parents, her relations and all that. Okay, apart from the gynecologist doctors, are there other doctors that take part in this issue? Yeah, basically, uh, like this program, the screening program we're having now, it's uh, for every doctor in Medugri. But because of our religious predilections, we, we now, uh, the female doctors are now selected to screen these okay. women. But uh, generally, if you go to our hospitals, you see uh, obstetrics and gynecology doctors uh, comprising both males and females. So what we do now for the screening is that we invited so many, everybody, M1, Medical Women Association of okay. Nigeria, Borno State Chapter, so everybody is involved. So, uh, but the gynecologists, obstetric and gynecology doctors are the ones that really screen. Then others will now uh, play a role in logistics and so many things just to just for the success of the program. Okay, thank you so much. Um, doctor, after having treated the patients or you experienced any recurrence that uh, after having treated the patients, are there any recurrence of the cervical cancer again? Yeah, there are um, some few patients uh, have recurrence, but the, the recurrence rate in patients that present early is very low compared to those that present late, where virtually or nothing uh, is done. And then because we don't really have the radiotherapy, okay. most patients, uh, if you go to our wards in UMGH, you see lots of them, and I think they really need the financial support from the government and from everybody, not forgetting religious organizations and Everybody, everybody can just, uh, we, can, we, we can do this together because cervical cancer is really debilitating and if we can support them financially, morally, I think it should go a long way. Even again, supporting them financially, morally, that's in terms of treatment. Are there any side effects that you encounter that's on the victim or on the patient? Yeah. The side effects, side effects of, of the treatment. Of the treatment. Mm. You know, uh, for cytotoxic chemotherapy, to give chemotherapy, they are not without side effects. Uh, so many of them come with uh, symptoms like, um, in addition to nausea and vomiting, okay. they come with symptoms of uh, alopecia, that is, they lose their right. hair, yes, and then mm. some will uh, present with kidney uh, injury, liver, so many of the side effects, but it's really seen. And then most times the risk outweighs uh, the benefit outweighs the risk. So we treat them, and most times we don't really see such complications. Okay, thank you. So what can you tell us about the overall outlook of timely and effective care services given to patients? Um, the um, presentation of patients mm -hmm. generally, the people of uh, my people, because I'm Kanuri, so okay. my people actually don't really like coming to the hospital. Mm -hmm. They feel since, as I said, the cervix is hidden within the vagina, so the feeling of them coming to the hospital, opening up to a stranger mm -hmm. to look into their cervix is really a drawback. That is why the awareness campaign is going on. That is why I want everybody, the religious leaders, everybody, social media, everybody to be, to be involved so that we can to help our people. Away. Yes, yes, to help our people because pre-malignant lesions are uh, easily detected and then treatment is prompt. There is no issue with that. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I think that's all we have for the day. Thank you, Doctor, for, of course, lending some of your precious time to discuss and speak at length and trying to enlighten the public on cervical cancer. And that's quite good and impressive. We appreciate your time and effort. 
Thank you. Doctor. Thank you very much. I'll be looking forward to <laughs> And yes, too, yeah. we look forward to having you on many other shows to enlighten the public on many matters of interest. Yeah, inshallah. Thank you so much, Doctor. Right, thank you. Okay, viewers, here we come to the end of today's show. A show targeted at enlightening the public on cervical cancer as January is the month of cervical cancer awareness worldwide. Broadly speaking, it is hardly possible to avoid the unavoidable when it has already come. But I believe it is quite possible to carry out any practice or practice preventive measures to unavoidable things. Just prevent cervical cancer by undergoing its preventive measures. Practice preventive measures. Prevention is better than cure. And to better prevent cervical cancer is to better know its causes. Your health is your wealth. This is a program coming to you from the television channel of the BRTV, Borno Radio Television Authority, in collaboration with Elbit Global Foundation. You can subscribe, you can like, you like, you follow our programs on our YouTube channels at Elbit Global Foundation. I remain my humble self, Zanna Babokura, your host in the studio, together with Zainab Muhammad Hassan and our guest, Dr. Aisha. Thank you and bye for now.